My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. The Leader Assistant Podcast is brought to you by Goody. If you're starting to think about holiday gifts for your team like I am, Goody is a game changer. They have amazing gifts that people will really love, including brands that give back to charitable causes. As a longtime executive assistant, I've always been nervous about holiday gifting season. But thankfully, Goody's platform lets you send one gift or hundreds at the same time without ever worrying about shipping details. Can I get an amen? With Goody, your gift recipients provide all their shipping info and they can even swap out your gift for another option if they prefer. It's free to start gifting, and you can get a $20 credit when you sign up. Oh, and if you mention you heard about Goody from the Leader Assistant Podcast, Goody will add an extra $10 credit to your account. Go to leaderassistant.com slash Goody to start gifting today. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's episode 189. This is your host, Jeremy Burrows, and you can check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 189, leaderassistant.com slash 189. And today, I have the privilege of speaking with Ken Babcock. Ken is the CEO of a software company called Tango. That's right, Tango. It's a great name. Tango.us is their website. Uh, Ken, how's it going today? It's going good. I am... Proud to be number 189. That's what I was hoping for. (laughs) There you go. All your dreams have come true. Um, What part of the world are you in? Uh, I'm outside of Chicago. So uh, we are preparing for the impending winter. Um, But uh, yeah, it's a nice little, nice little area of the country. Uh, I feel like Chicago is one of those cities where everyone's like, oh, I've never been there. But it's the number two largest city in the U.S., yeah, so. Chicago is too cold in the winter. That's for sure. My brother <laughs> lived there for a while, and I'm like, "How do you live here in the winter? This is terrible." Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful in the in the summer and spring and fall. Yeah, summer makes up for it for sure. So. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you have dogs? Do you have kids? Are you a cat person? What are your hobbies? Give us a little bit of uh, tidbits for your personal life. Yeah, totally. So. Um, in Chicago, I live with my my wife, my nine month old son, and our two year old um, poodle. Her name is Balboa. Um, if if you're in the Bay Area, we actually named her after a restaurant called Balboa Cafe. Um, so we used to live in San Francisco. Remember those times very fondly. So we uh, memorialized it with our dog. But um, yeah, hobbies wise. Uh, you know, big, big sports guy, you know, biking, uh, tennis, golf, um, from Buffalo, New York originally. So I'm also a big Buffalo Bills fan, which in the time that I've been a Buffalo Bills fan now is definitely the best time to be a Buffalo Bills fan. So (laughs) I am really relishing in it, um, which is great, but yeah, outside of all that, you know, building tango is obviously a a full-time job. Yeah. Well, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan, so we have a lot of uh, history, uh, the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs, mostly yeah. recently and then back in the 90s. So, fun time. Yeah, well, I'm actually going to Kansas City with some friends from high school in two weeks, and we're gonna we're gonna see uh, we'll, we'll see who comes out on top. But yeah, it'll be a good it'll be a good game. So, Ken, tell us a little bit about Tango first, and then we'll we'll dive into. Kind of, you recently, I believe, hired an assistant slash chief of staff role, and let's talk about that. But first, what's what is Tango? Yeah, so Tango allows you to create step by step tutorials of any process that you that you run on your computer, any tool that you're using, any web page, 
um, in the flow of work. So all you have to do is turn on our Chrome extension, hit press capture, go through your process as you normally would. Um, and we basically output the screenshots, automated descriptions, URLs of, of everything that you just did. And so what we're trying to do is lower the burden of creating documentation. What we heard when we were initially building the product was that, you know, there was kind of this like trifecta of problems with documentation. It takes too long to create. It gets stale really quickly. And then when it gets stale, you're basically like fielding questions from everyone on your team. Why, why is this broken? Why can't I use this? This should look like this, not like that. And so that cognitive barrier actually prevents a lot of like high performers and, and process experts from actually documenting their knowledge. Um, we actually just ran uh, a round table um, at one of our uh, partners conferences. And we asked people, what percentage of your documentation or what percentage of your knowledge is documented within your organization? And 70% of the respondents said less than 50%. So less than 50% of their institutional knowledge is actually documented. And that's really what we're going for. By remo removing that cognitive barrier, you'll have more of your knowledge documented. It'll be easier to update it because you just have to do your process again. Um, and, you know, it'll allow organizations to just run more smoothly um, and, you know, with consistent information. So that's that's why we built Tango. Um We've got 180,000 users in just just a year, um, so it's clearly something that's solving a, a, a big pain point. Wow, that's that was going to be my next question. How long have you guys been going going on? So Not a year, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. And what was your? Tell us a little bit about your pre Tango days. What, what what's your uh, professional career mm -hmm. history? Yeah, so I started my career in, in consulting um, in New York City, working for Deloitte's strategy and operations practice. Did that for about a year. Um, didn't love the traveling every single week. You know, you're living in the greatest city in the world, but they're sending you to all these random places. And um, I, and I had an opportunity to go join Uber in 2014. So at a phase where that company was growing like crazy. Um, there was just a lot of things to figure out, a lot of problems to solve, a lot of opportunities. Uh, so I stayed there for four and a half years, held roles in analytics, data science, product strategy, um, really enjoyed my time there. I think there's a lot of great learnings that I could apply both what to do and what not to do when starting a company. Um, but, you know, I value that experience a lot. And then from there, I went to Harvard Business School, which is where I met my co-founders for Tango, Brian and Dan. Um, and that's where we started the company. We actually didn't finish Harvard Business School because we left and started Tango. Hmm. Nice. So how many employees do you all have? So today we're at 30 um, and we're fully remote. So that's 30 employees across 15 states. Wow, that's awesome. So when did you decide to Obviously, you've only been going for about a year, but when did you decide to hire an assistant and why? Yeah, yeah. And I would say, you know, we've actually been going for since like June of 2020. Okay. The product's okay. been live for a year, but a lot of the build up to that point, you know, was building the team, building the initial product. Um, and we actually hired our chief of staff. Angela in, in May of this year. And I think it just got to a point where, um, you know, us as a founding team, you know, there's three of us, we had sort of clear delineated responsibilities, you know, across the team, but um, we lacked sort of somebody focusing on what is, what is our operating cadence? How do we make sure that like the trains are running on time and everyone is, um, aware of what's going on and that communication channels are as thorough and frequent as they needed to be. Um, super important when you're a remote team because you don't have those water cooler conversations. You don't have that, that working lunch or the after, after work drinks. Um, so in our mind, it was like, let's actually hire someone who knows and understands 
how organizations communicate and how ideas permeate throughout the organization and make sure that, you know, they can kind of be that second brain to us as a founding team that can then make sure that everyone's aligned on the rest of the team. So how did you find, is Angela, is that right? Angela, yeah. Yeah, how did you find her? So we were looking for um, executive assistants who had worked with, you know, high level executives at growing companies. Um, So Angela was coming to us from Mode Analytics, which was probably a Series C or Series D startup, about 200 people. But Angela had been there and seen the growth of that company. Um, And she was specifically supporting the CEO. So she knew what it meant to be, um, you know, sort of an executive's right hand person in a time where the company is growing like crazy. You're kind of building the plane while it flies. You know, that's that's obviously what we've been doing. Um, And that experience to us was extremely valuable because um, your your organization as as your business grows, your organization is shifting constantly and the needs of you know, one month they're going to be different from the next. So we wanted someone who would have kind of this growth mindset about how their role would shift and how, you know, they would almost be seen as successful if they were able to adapt to the shifting of the business. Um, And Angela just showed that in spades in our interviews. I mean, she was, you know, probably the first to admit like, oh yeah, you know, I did these things at mode, but then I had to redo them because everything changed. Uh, so that was a trait that we looked for um, in in hiring in hiring a chief of staff, um, and it became pretty clear that Angela was going to be the right person. Hmm. So, is her official title chief of staff, or is it like a hybrid chief of staff slash EA? It's chief of staff, and so you know what we we actually worked with a firm, uh, a search firm for executive assistants. They're they're called TAC Advisors. Yeah, um, good good friends with the. Uh those guys yeah they're great yeah they're great and uh what they kind of coached us up on was you know if if you're going to want someone who has those skill sets um that we talked about i mean we didn't even really have like a viewpoint on what the role needed to be titled uh they're like you know the, the next progression for a lot of eas is thinking about how can they become a chief of staff which holds a little bit more weight credibility within the organization um but is also you know, maybe less focused on um, transactional tasks, but also can be focused on some of these more like strategic, ambiguous, no one's done it before, someone's got to do it. And so um, that defining the role as a chief of staff is also attractive to the people that were looking to make that leap to the next to the next step. So Angela is our chief of staff. She was an EA when she was at Mode. Nice. So do you have any sort of EA that handles your calendar or, you know, the traditional uh, transactional role, or do you kind of handle that yourself through automated tools like Calendly and all that fun stuff? Yeah. So we handle that piece ourselves. Uh, we, we do use Calendly for calendar, calendar management. Um, we do have like recruiting firms that will, you know, work, work with us on emails and outreach and things like that. Uh, so a lot of those transactional tasks, we're still, we're still handling. We've looked into like kind of virtual assistance to help with that too. But, um, at this point stuff seems to be still somewhat manageable, but it'll definitely get to a point where it's not. Yeah. Awesome. So how walk us through the onboarding process with Angela, how much of it was, Hey, here's what we'd like to do versus she coming in, you know, came in and said, Hey, this is what we should do. Like how much was it you telling kind of guiding that onboarding process versus her guiding the onboarding? Well, what we wanted Angela to do was actually spend time with as many people on the team as she could to just get a multitude of perspectives on what's working and what wasn't working um at tango and so we actually sort of previewed that with everyone on the team you know angela's gonna be spending time with you she wants to get your feedback she wants to understand how to make tango a better place to work and so what we talked about a lot during her onboarding was kind of two mandates for this role one being 
um, operational excellence sort of around that operating cadence and thinking about how do the trains all run on time? How do we make sure everyone's aligned and speaking the same language? Uh, and then the other piece was employee experience. And so with employee experience, um, you know, that's where we were making an additional investment in the in the culture of the team and, and making sure that people felt valued, their voices were heard, um, the work that they were doing was making an impact. And so Angela's also kind of extended into that too, where she's thinking about how can Tango be a better place to work, whether that means a little more fun, um, a little bit more like maybe purpose-driven. Uh, so with those two goals in mind, she kind of went out and talked to a bunch of people on the team and, and tried to figure out where where she could make improvements. Can you share maybe one example of an improvement that you you made with uh, through that process? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Tango being a sort of tool for knowledge transfer, a lot of people on the team are really passionate about growth, learning, development. Um, and one thing that we did not have was any sort of policy around learning and development. Um, so Angela actually was the one who created uh, a policy for us, a learning and development stipend um, that's $1,000 annually that anyone on the team can use for courses, conferences, lectures, um, you know, books. I mean, anything that they would, you know, sort of consider, hey, this is helping me up level in my career um, and helping me learn a new skill. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we were fully in support of that and, and rolled that out about a month ago. Uh, but that came from Angela spending time with the team and recognizing like, oh, these, these are a lot of like driven people. These are a lot of people that want to grow and develop and Tango should be the one supporting that development. So um, that's been really positive. We've already seen in the last month, like I want to say six employees have used the L&D stipend. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great to have somebody that can go, you know, get get their hands dirty, if you will, and and figure out what what the team needs. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what is something that you've seen with your software Tango in regards to how assistants are using it? So you mentioned when we first got on the call before we started recording that you see you see that Tango can be a great tool for executive assistants, chiefs of staff to use, um, uh, you know, a, a good tool in their tool belt. So what, maybe do you have any examples of customers or users that are using it in that way? Or for the assistants listening, how are you excited about how Tango can help them? Yeah, I mean, I think I think what's really special about Tango is just the flexibility that we've built into the product. So you can capture your workflow on Tango in any website or any tool. We have a desktop app. Our Chrome extension browser is flexible across any website. So, you know, when you're educating somebody on how to use a tool, which I know a lot of times, uh, you know, executive assistants find themselves in that, whether it's training each other. Um, training, you know, the person that they support, training someone on that person's team to be like, hey, you know, this is how we're using this now, or um, this is how we're, you know, booking business flights, or this is how we're using our expense management system. Um, we layer over all top of that. So if you need to create a tango that outlines, here's what you need to do step by step, um, that's probably the best use of 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 the product. Um, we're actually doing a webinar with that same firm I mentioned, TAC Advisors, to talk about how um, how to use Tango in a executive assistant or chief of staff capacity. Um, a few other things that I think are interesting is, you know, the onboarding process. So you, you asked me about Angela's onboarding. Our company-wide onboarding has a ton of Tangos linked within it. You know, hey, here's how you sign up for a 401k. Here's how you select your benefits. Here's how you submit your I-9 documents. And it's all links to Tango that show people how to do that. So anyone whose responsibilities kind of, you know, overlap into HR or systems or IT 
I highly recommend using Tango to to showcase the rest of the team how they use it. Awesome. Well, Ken, thank you so much for being on the show. And I'm really excited to see what happens with Tango and and try it out. I actually, one of my team members tried it out a while back and she raved about it um, and how, e- how easy it was to use. And um, yeah, so definitely looking forward to seeing w- what happens with your partnership with Angela as well. And I'll uh, be sure to, uh, I'll be sure to ping her. I think I'm connected with her on LinkedIn. So I'll be sure to ping her and tell her, keep up the good work. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What, uh, where can people reach out and connect with you and or Tango um, and find out more? Yeah. So, I mean, tango.us, our website, that's the, that's the best way to learn more about Tango. Um, but, you know, my inbox is open. As I stated, I still manage that. So you can, uh, you can email me at ken at tango.us. Awesome. And I forgot, I was going to ask you one question about Tango. How did you come up with the name? Yeah, well, we uh, we debated a lot of different names. The reason we like Tango, obviously, it's a dance. Um, in that dance, there's there's a leader and there's a follower, and it's a series of steps. And so, you know, what we've created with Tango, the product, step by step tutorials, probably coming from someone who's an expert to someone who's trying to learn that process. So. The name for us fit really, really well with what we were building. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, something that's two syllables, easy to spell, easy to say, that's always a good name. Yeah, I was going to say it's definitely strong when it comes to uh, software startup naming world. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks again for being on the show and uh, leaderassistant.com slash 189 to check out the show notes and I'll link to Ken's LinkedIn and the Tango website and all that good stuff. And yeah, uh, best of luck to you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com